Hi there, welcome to the third video tutorial on factoring strategies. This is probably the last video tutorial on factoring. Uh, this is going to be on difference of squares factoring. So we're just going to quickly review how to use difference of squares to factor uh, an expression. Uh, it'll just be a quick video, probably one or two examples. Uh, let's get started here. So difference of squares factoring. So for an expression of this form, this is the important part. Your expression must look like this. Uh, so this looks much different than the trinomials that we factored in the previous video lesson. Notice there's only two terms. There's a subtraction sign in between. Uh, what we're going to do is take the square root of the first and the last term and write your expression in this form. So all of our solutions today will look like this. You're going to have two binomials. Notice that you've got A, A, B, B. And the only difference is you've got a subtraction sign here and an uh, addition sign here. Now difference of squares factoring it's very easy to forget uh, what this process involves. However, if you think about the name difference of squares, it literally refers to subtraction, right? Difference means subtraction of two squares. So you're subtracting two things that you can take the square root of. That's what that literally means, difference of squares. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples here. This first one, x squared minus 9. The first thing that really jumps out at you is that there's only two terms. So as, as soon as you see two terms and you're being asked to factor, uh, immediately you want to start thinking, okay, maybe this thing is a difference of squares. Right, the next thing you need to check is, is there a difference? Is there a subtraction sign? There is, in fact, a subtraction sign in this case. So the, the last criteria we have to check is, can we take the square root of both terms? Well, can you take the square root of x squared? At this point, I'm hoping you know the square root of x squared is x, so you can take the square root of x squared. Can you take the square root of 9? You can take the square root of 9. Uh, so this is, in fact, a difference of squares. We've literally got a difference of two squares. All right, so let's, let's break this thing down into two binomials using the difference of squares factoring method. All right, so that's not too, there's not too much work involved. Remember, all we're going to do is take the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and we're going to write it in this form. You, the important thing is to make sure you've got a subtraction uh, and an addition sign. Uh, the, the order in which you write these binomials does not matter. So I could have x plus 3 first, x minus 3 after. It does not make a difference in, in this case. And that's it for the first example. So second example, taking a look at this, the first thing, obviously, that, that jumps out is the fact that this is a, an addition sign. Um, we do have two terms, so it does appear to be a difference of squares, but you have to remember that there is no difference here. This is an, a sum of, of squares. There is no sum of squares factoring method. Uh, so whenever you see something like this, uh, whoever's giving you this problem is trying to trick you. Uh, this, th this thing does not factor. Okay, now thinking back to maybe previous studies of quadratics, uh, Quadratic functions or quadratic relations look like this. This, this would be the graph of, for instance, x squared. Um, if I add a 25 on the end, that means I'm shifting my, my parabola up 25 units. Okay, so just imagine the graph would look something like this. Remember, when we're factoring, we're trying to find x-intercepts, right? So we, we're able to tell where this graph crosses the x-axis by looking at our factored form. In this case, we are not able to factor, so we are not able to determine the x-intercepts of this parabola, namely because it doesn't have any. So you can see this thing will never cross the x-axis. It's going to go on forever and ever in the upwards direction. Uh, if it was down here, you could see that I'd have two x-intercepts here and here. But in this case, I definitely do not. So this thing does not factor. Do not let whoever gave this to you trick you. All right, one, one quick example. Uh, this guy here. Immediately you're thinking, okay, great, there's two terms, there's a difference, maybe it's a difference of squares, but upon inspection, you cannot take the square root of 54, you cannot take the square root of 6. Now, don't let this one fool you. Whoever gave this to you would probably laugh if you said, you know, this thing doesn't factor. One thing I want you to always check before you do any sort of factoring is, is there a common factor? Now, taking a look at these two terms, if you think about it for a little bit, you'll actually see that you can take out 6 out of each of these terms. Okay, so make sure you've common factored, right? Remember, uh, common factoring just involves identifying the greatest common factor and removing it from each term. There's a video tutorial I posted on common factoring. If you're a little fuzzy on that, just take a peek at the video tutorial, right? Remember, I can distribute this back into the brackets, and I'll end up with my initial expression. Okay, so I've common factored out of 6. 
Now just ignore that six for a moment and let's let's revisit this expression. Now is this would this be considered a difference of squares if the six just ignore the six. Now I can take the square root of nine and x squared. I can take the square root of one and I've also got a difference. Alright, so this thing is a difference of squares. So we can factor this thing using the same strategy. Okay, I'm just going to carry that six along for the ride. Uh, and I'm going to open two sets of brackets. One's going to have the square root of 9x squared minus 1, and, or minus the square root of 1. The other will have the square root of 9x squared plus the square root of 1. Okay, and I'll end up with, with something like this. That's really all there is for your difference of squares factoring. The only tricky thing can be, you know, depending on who you have as your teacher or whoever's giving you this problem, you know, they could mess with you by giving you a sum of squares or, you know, a problem where you have to common factor. Don't let those things um, mess you up, right? Just remember you've got to either common factor or you've got to recognize that you cannot factor uh, a sum of squares. Okay, so that's the end of this one. Uh, this one was really quick, um, not too much involved there, but we just went over the uh, difference of squares factoring method. Uh, if you're looking for more, more factoring problems, take a peek at my other video tutorials on common factoring and trinomial factoring. Uh, and I'm hoping that this helps you as you, as you continue studying quadratics or functions. Great, thanks for watching.